Hey there world, I'm the Courageous Goldfish, and today we are finally doing the long-awaited manga haul. So a few videos back I was talking about a huge giant manga order that I had placed with Right Stuff and that I was just waiting on a couple of volumes to come in and then they would ship that big giant order to me. Uh, this was kind of my kickoff board for starting my manga collection. Um, I don't consider myself a manga collector and I likely never will be, uh, but I probably will pick up a few series in the future that interest me. So that's what we're talking about today is the series that I've picked up to start my manga collection, why I picked them, why I think they're great for manga collectors and just kind of tidbits in general. I'm really trying not to let this get out of control because we all know I already have one vice. I don't need another one. Furthermore, if you hear some nature sounds in the background, uh, I hope you can't hear that, but if you hear some birds and stuff like that, it is way too hot in here right now to be filming with the lights and everything without a window open. So the window that is like right here is open. So if you hear some outside background noise, hopefully it adds to your experience with this video. Some of you might know that I had like a half started Fruits Basket collection. Um, I got gifted the first three volumes for Christmas like years and years ago when the collector's editions first came out. Uh, and so once I actually got into the anime and loved it a lot, I decided that I wanted to finish off my manga collection series. So... I have the rest of the volumes that I needed here. Here is the thing about the Fruits Basket Collector's Edition volumes is that they feel so luxe. They are simple, but they feel amazing. Tactilely, they're very pleasing. The choice of like materials that they used for the outside is very nice. They feel hefty and like large, but not too large. Like some of the Omnibus versions, it's just like, man, you could like, this is a murder weapon, not a book, right? These collected very pleasingly. I really, really, really enjoy the rainbow spines, especially when they're all lined up together. They just look so pretty. It's just overall a very aesthetically pleasing manga release. These are made by Yen Press and they were absolutely a way better deal to buy on Right Stuff than they are for retail. So one thing that I do want to do is talk about pricing in this video. Because I'm Canadian, it can be a lot more expensive and a lot harder to take advantage of manga community like tips and tricks. Uh, so I wanted to talk about why Right Stuff was the right choice for me. Number one came down to that I got free shipping on this order. The books per volume can seem like a great deal, but when you actually transfer the USD to the CAD, you'd probably be paying about the same or even more because you have to pay for shipping. Uh, but because of the way that I did it, I actually ended up paying less per volume in Canadian than I would have had to if I just went to the bookstore. Hope that makes sense. I'm going to clear that up with like the numbers and all that. Uh, but it was cheaper for me, mostly due to the fact that I got free shipping. Uh, we'll go through the numbers and all that as I move on through series because some I got better deals on than others. For the Fruits Basket Collector's Editions, each volume retails for $20 US or $26 Canadian. On Right Stuff, my price per volume was $13.99 USD. Now adding my insurance and tax together and dividing it by how many books that I had added 82 cents per volume to this order. So I actually ended up paying $14.81 USD for each volume. $14.81 USD in Canadian is $18.84. So obviously that's a difference. I ended up saving $7.16 on each volume of this series. So my overall savings for just this series alone, buying off of Right Stuff instead of buying at my local bookstores, was $50.12 Canadian. As for the volumes themselves, I have volume 6, which has Kisa and Hiro on it, and it is the sunshine yellow one, which is my favorite out of the lineup. Volume 7, which has Ritsu and Isuzu, it is the green one. Volume 8, which has Kurano and Akito, and it is a purple volume. Volume number 9, which has Uotani and Hanajima on it. This one is an orange volume. Volume 10, which has Kakeru and Mati. This is a blue volume. 
volume 11, which has Ren, Akito's mother, and Kazuma, Kyo's master. This one is also an orange volume. And volume number 12, the final one in the series, which has Katsuya and Kyoko Honda. This one is like kind of a greenish blue seafoam type of color. Again, as I said before, I absolutely love these volumes. They are extremely aesthetically pleasing, and even if you're not a super huge fan of Fruits Basket, if you're a manga collector, these look really, really nice on a shelf. The only small little teeny tiny nitpick I have about this series aesthetically is that all of the volumes are a different color, which adds to the dichotomy and the beautifulness of the rainbow, but 9 and 11 are the same color of orange. I'm not really sure why they decided to go with that, so it just kind of like ruins that a little bit for me, that they're the same color and they're the only two that have the same color of orange, so... I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a little bit too nitpicky about it, but it does bother me a little bit. That is it for the completing of collections, and now we move into the starting of new ones, which is really unfortunate for my wallet, but I'm super, super excited. Uh, and this next series is one that has been near and dear to my heart for years. I, of course, like most teenagers in the anime community, was obsessed with Black Butler. It was a phase that I never really quite grew out of. I always have fondness for it, even though looking back on it, it is a really terrible anime and I wouldn't recommend that you watch it in the current day. Um, but I had heard some really great things about the manga and I loved the story so much that I really just wanted to see how it wrapped up. And already, <laughs> I really want justice for this series. The manga is incredible, the art is great, the story divulges pretty much immediately from the anime plot. It is so fantastic and I'm just having so much fun reading it. So I have the first nine volumes here. Volume one, which has Sebastian on the cover. Uh, I actually have the Japanese release of the first volume, which is kind of funny to like look at them side by side because it's the same art but just like such a different like experience, like tactilely. It's kind of funny. Volume number two, which also has Sebastian on it. Uh, the thing about Toboso Sensei is that Sebastian is like her trademark character, and so a lot of the Black Butler volumes have Sebastian on the front. Uh, sometimes you get a little bit of a treat of another character, but they're mostly Sebastian, and I'm not complaining. Volume number three, Sebastian as well. Volume number four, I have a button that has this cover on it for a reason. Volume number five, also Sebastian. Surprise, surprise. Volume number six, which, surprise, surprise, not Sebastian. This one has CL on the front. Volume number seven, which has Joker, which is our first, like, side character cover page. Volume number eight, which has William T. Spears on the front. And volume nine, which has this very snazzy illustration of Lao. I am really, really excited with where I'm at at this series because that means that the next time I order this series, I'm going to be able to get volume 13, which is my ultimate favorite cover of all the Black Butler volumes. I am in love with Lizzie Midford and I cannot wait to have this volume in my collection. She is so perfect! Uh, and also there's a recent one that has Ran Mao on the cover that I really like as well. It's just so cool. I am loving the newer covers. I am loving just everything about collecting the series is kind of healing that hole in my heart that I did not know was there. I would highly, highly recommend it, even if you are not a Black Butler fan from back in the day. Uh, this is actually a really good series to get into if you can get over the stigma that it has in the community. I would highly recommend it. I'm having a blast reading it. $9.35 USD plus the 82 cents for like insurance and taxes came to $10.17 USD per volume, which is $12.94 Canadian. Black Butler volumes go for $17 Canadian at the bookstore, so that is a savings of $4.06 per volume, times 9 volumes is $36.54. Moving slightly out of manga territory, um, another series that is super, super, super close to my heart is Awari no Seraph. 
Uh, this is a show that I think is criminally underrated, even though it is quite popular in the West. You really never hear people talk about it anymore, and it left us on a cliffhanger. It did, and I really wanted to know what happened with the rest of the series. Um, but, <laughs> turns out that there are actually some prequel series that are going on as well about my favorite character from the whole series. So I was like, of course I need to like snatch those and read them like right this moment. Uh, so I have Seraph of the End, Guren Ichinoze, Catastrophe at 16. So this is a light novel series that is supposed to take place before the events of like you and Mikaela and like the whole the world is ending thing. Um, I have only read the first volume of this so far and I am hooked. It is incredible. Um, I have never had experience with light novels, but honestly, not too bad. I mean, because it's translated from Japanese into English, obviously the, 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 the vocabulary isn't extensive, right? Like the writing I find is a little bit simple, probably just because a lot of the original like nuances from the Japanese text got lost when it got translated. Uh, but overall, I am really enjoying reading the series and I want to collect the prequel light novels before I actually jump into collecting the Awari no Seraph manga. Um, that one is still ongoing and I believe it's at like 26 or 27 volumes now. Uh, so it's gonna take me a while to catch up, but I am really enjoying reading about Guren's adventures. This particular volume, the first one, has Guren and Mahiru on the cover and Sayuri and Shigure on the back. These are published by Vertical, and I don't actually have any experience with Vertical manga or anything like that, uh, but I am thinking that the printing is not as great as I would like it to be. There are some pages where the words are a little bit smudged, not to the point where you can't read them, but to the point where it's like, eh, I don't know. This could just be because the manga shortage is really hitting the community right now. Um, a lot of things are like just getting printed like super super fast so they can just get it out to people. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if that's a common thing with vertical manga, but that's something I noticed when I was reading through this first volume here. Volume number two here has Guren and Shinya on the cover, and I think Mito and Norito on the back. Volume number three has, I think, Kureto Hiragi and Mahiru on the front, and in the back is also Mahiru, this beautiful illustration of Mahiru. Are you kidding me? Hello? Volume number four is like bite size in comparison to the rest of them, which like kind of throws it off on my shelf. I'm not like super happy about that, but I'm confused because Google won't tell me if four is the last volume because there's two light novel series, right? Like there's the Catastrophe at 16, and then there's the Seraph of the End Resurrection at 19. And so I don't know if four is the last volume and that's why it's so tiny, and then you jump into 19, or if there's more that still need to be printed in English for the 16 and they just started printing the 19. I'm confused. I can't find any information. Maybe it'll be clear when I start to read them. Um, hopefully because i'm a little confused as to where one starts the other starts and when the end is you know when is the end want to know what the end is uh but this one has guren and shinya on the front as well and i believe that is yuichiro on the back there I do also have the first two volumes of the second prequel series, which is Seraph of the End, Gurenichi no Ze, Resurrection at 19. Uh, so this first volume here has this beautiful illustration of Guren, and then this one on the back, I believe, is also Guren. I think, I think shit goes down in this volume, so I'm not ready for it, but you know. We can cry together, get these books, get these light novels, and we can cry together. And volume two, which has Shinya on the front and Guren and Mahiru on the back. Uh, spoilers for those of you who haven't seen the show, Mahiru is dead, probably maybe at this point, but not in the first prequel series. She's still alive and well, um, but it kind of goes into like how she died and why she's like kind of still around in the main series. Uh, so if you like Mahiru, if you like Guren and you want the backstory, this is great. I've really been enjoying reading them. Uh, again, I'm a little bit confused as to where one starts and the other ends, but 
I guess I'll figure it out eventually. The other thing about this too is that these ones, the uh, Resurrection at 19 ones, are also thin, thinner than these ones. They're about the same size as the fourth volume, right? So it's like, I don't know, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm not sure what's going on. If anybody knows the secrets and I'm just like, dumb let me know in the comments down below but i can't figure it out the light novel pricing does get a little bit tricky because most of them are different uh so i did do the minute calculations because i wanted to know exactly how much money i had saved so for the first three volumes of the catastrophe at 16 uh they cost me 13 dollars 74 usd per volume with the 82 cents added for the insurance and tax so that means that I paid $17.48 Canadian for these. Uh, now they retail for $20.95 Canadian. Uh, so that is a savings of $3.47 per volume, which adds up to a grand total of uh, $10.41. I got all the numbers here. There's too many to keep track of, but $10.41 saved on just these three. And then number four here was a little bit cheaper, obviously, because less paper, I would hope so. Volume number four cost me $10.14 USD. That is with the 82 cents for the insurance and the tax. Uh, so $10.14, which is $12.90 Canadian. Uh, these retail for $17.50 Canadian. Uh, so I did save $4.60 on this particular volume. With tax and insurance included, the last two volumes, the Resurrection at 19 volumes, they cost me $10.86 USD, which is $13.82 Canadian. They retail for $18.95 Canadian, so I actually ended up saving $5.13 on each of these. So the math worked out that on all of these light novel volumes, I ended up saving $25.27 Canadian. And... My last and final volume, I must make a confession about. Uh, I am 100% not planning on continuing to buy the rest of this series uh, because I already have it. Um, this is the Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Eternal Edition first volume. You, like, if, if you know anything about me at all, you know that I am the hugest Sailor Moon fan in the world. Um, I actually got the Kodansha version of the manga way, way, way back when in like 2012 for Christmas or something crazy like that. Uh, so I have had the manga for years. It was the first manga I ever read, loved it to death, like have autographs like filling the pages almost. It's just, I, I've loved that set so much. Um, but I have a friend who collects manga and she's a bad influence. And so she gave it to me. She was like, look, look, look at these, look at how pretty they are. And I absolutely, absolutely fell in love with this version. They are huge. Like look at the size of this thing. They are big, they are beautiful. Um, I don't need to collect the series again. I already have the manga in the Kodansha versions, but I really, really wanted to have this, even maybe just as a coffee table book, because it is so beautiful. I absolutely love the very Sailor Moon Crystal inspired art on the front here. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it, but it is also a little bit holographic, which is amazing. Um, and I am just so, so in love with this. This is like, an absolute need for me. So like I said, I'm not going to be collecting the rest of the Eternal Editions. Uh, they're just coming out with a new set of Sailor Moon manga aside from this set. So like, you got options basically. I just really wanted to have this because as I was flipping through it in the bookstore, I was like, this is beautiful. Because it's so big, the illustrations are friggin' huge and they're printed on such nice paper that it's just like such a crisp and clear image. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so I would recommend buying at least even just the first volume if you like the Sailor Moon manga, if you like the art style or anything like that. You could buy it and even just treat it as an art book, which is kind of what I did. Um, but absolutely, absolutely beautiful. I love these editions and I just, I didn't need it, but I needed it, if you know what I mean. This one I did actually get quite a good savings on. These retail for $36.99 Canadian, which is like 
kind of expensive if you if you ask me uh, which is why I was hesitant to pick it up in the bookstore uh, but when I was making my right stuff order I was like I can get this for a really good price and I really really liked it so I threw it in there and I was like you know what I'm gonna treat myself as if the rest of the order wasn't already treating myself. So with taxes and insurance added to this, I ended up paying $20.41 USD, which translates into $25.97 Canadian, uh, which is crazy because it retails for $36.99, like I said. So that is a savings of like $11.02 Canadian. Like I saved $11 on this because I ordered it from another store instead of just picking it up in person. Like I was, I was flabbergasted that this actually worked out to be cheaper to buy the manga and have it shipped to me internationally. Like that just kind of blew my mind. But I was sitting there doing like all the math before I ordered it. And I was like, I'm saving so much money by doing this. How? This just doesn't seem like it should be possible. The one thing I did forget to calculate though was how much overall I actually saved. Uh, so I'm gonna put that in big numbers here somewhere uh, when I do the calculation for that. But I mean, honestly, I just, it was so crazy. Even the conversion and the shipping internationally and all of that kind of stuff, I did end up saving quite a bit of money on this order that I otherwise would not have saved buying it from my local bookstores. Honestly, that's the way to go for me personally. I'm not like, like dying to have the volumes in my hands. If I can get a good deal on them, I'd rather wait and buy like a whole bunch at once when I can afford it. That seems to be the way to go on this uh, because I am far, far, far more patient for things when I know I got a good deal on it. But yeah, overall, I am like so, so, so happy that I am starting to finally read some of these series that I've loved forever and ever. I'm really, really enjoying my manga reading experience so far. Um, I've actually been borrowing some volumes from a friend of mine that collects manga because even though I don't want to actually buy them for myself, I still would like to read them. Uh, so I've been reading My Next Life as a Villainess, All Routes Lead to Doom. That's a fantastic series if you like, like, isekai, almost tarum type thing, but like, you know, in a, in a nice and fluffy and wholesome way. Uh, I've also been reading Spy Family because I've been really, really loving the anime and my friend is a huge diehard fan of the manga, so she's like, you have to read it! So. I have been enjoying doing it lately. I have always been someone who has loved to read, uh, but obviously as you get older that gets harder and I've kind of been in a slump where I like didn't read for like something stupid like years and years now. So I am really, really excited that this is kind of like getting me back into reading a little bit. So I've been enjoying that. And also, I mean, my shelves look really pretty with all these great volumes on them. <laughs> so again, like I said, I'm really trying to make sure that this doesn't like spiral into an obsession because again, we know I already have a vice for stupid things that sit on shelves, right? So I don't need another one, but we'll see how it goes is what I'm saying. Um, but for now, this is the extent of my manga collection. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you enjoyed kind of like hearing all the numbers just to see like how much you could save by shopping around. I know that manga is a really expensive hobby and so if you are looking to get it for the best price possible, I think you really do have to do some number crunching. Uh, but this ended up being the cheapest way to do it for me. Um, hopefully maybe that works out for you, uh, but if not, you can always find a cheap way to do things. Anyways, that is all I have for you today. Again, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and comment down below what your favorite thing was that I picked up today. But of course, as always, thank you so, so much for watching and I will see you on the flip side.